Now my name is Gary Stafford and I'm the Technical Director and Chairman of uh, GAN Management and this is our web website uh, www.gan with two n's in .co.uk and um, you might have seen some of the other videos on YouTube um, where I've shown you uh, that uh, how our software does uh, GAN hopefully correctly and how uh, everybody else's does it completely wrong. Um, but there's far far more to our service than just software and data and uh, we also give trading advice and signals and education uh, in the techniques of WD GAN uh, but more importantly the techniques of GANs that work because there are a lot of things that GAN said that I frankly have spent years trying to get to work but never could without the benefit of hindsight but after saying that there are things that I think are absolutely unbelievable so um, this is our website and uh, while you're here um, we do regular free webinars, introductions to some of the basics of uh, WD GAN. The next one is on the 28th of February 2012, um, and there's probably one a month. Uh, you can register for the uh, register for the webinar, which, as I said, was free by going to Education, then going to WD GAN Workshops, and if you scroll down to the bottom, then you can if you click here, um, then if you register, uh, please put in some decent information like your name etc. Um, if you don't then you either we probably won't invite you to the webinar. So um, what we're going to do now is look at our focus uh, service which gives buy and sell signals on everything from commodities, uh, currencies, shares, you name it basically we actually follow it. So I've logged in and this is uh, our page. Now I have my own section here with signals that I'm looking to do things buy and sell. You can see the S&P future, there's one on the Australian dollar against sterling pound New Zealand dollar, uh, the FTSE 100, uh, there's just loads of signals down here of things that I'm looking to happen. Uh, you can see I've just put on those, uh, two new ones today, one on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, another one on the FTSE 100. The previous signals you can see up here um, is for something else to happen completely different. So in this particular case, this one is a possible shorting opportunities and this one up here is uh, for possible buying opportunities. But what this video is going to be about is going over the signals that I've done uh, that I gave in uh, 2011, uh, the good ones and the bad ones, and uh, just to see how good we are at what we actually do. The great thing is, is everything we do is documented. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to uh, the beginning of the year and look at some of the signals. Now if we go to past conferences um, and go to see, we'll start in 2011, otherwise I'll be doing this for days and days and days. Uh, go to February, I don't know, pick the 28th. This will actually show you the website um, of the 28th in February. Now these were the first signals I did of the uh, of the year, so I didn't do any until uh, until February. And in fact, the first one I actually did was Coco UK May. Now, um, basically, everything down here um, are th things I'm looking to do, and uh, they just basically say what I'm watching for. So if I click on the Coco one, you'll see that it starts to talk. This is Coco UK. I'm looking for a possible shorting opportunity uh, here. It may go slightly higher um, because it's basically uh, 33 and a third percent from uh, the major low here. Um, it works at 16.6, .6, which is half that value, and it's 25 percent from this minor low here. Uh, and it seems to repeat. So that's uh, an example of um, a focus signal. However, what all these lines that you can see, they all look um, very complicated um, uh, and obviously uh, most of you won't know what we're doing because it is pretty unique. This is uh, a lot of things that GAN never actually said. Um, but there is uh, something, a part of the uh, service that explains the signal in full. And so we have what we call training videos. So if we click on the training video section, then these are uh, these maybe 400 videos I've done um, starting in 2002 when the internet really became quick enough to actually stream this kind of stuff. And the first part of the rules here are money management, uh, stop losses, um, basic percentages, advanced percentages, angles basic, angles advanced, entry points. Now, um, in this video I'm not going to go through the entry points when you actually physically get into uh, get into it because uh, 
uh, this video will just go on for ages there are different ways of entering the market and a lot of it comes down to how speculative you want to get in the more speculative you are um, the more you're going to get wrong however if you wait for other rules they might not happen so it's a it's a balance between getting that correct but um, I showed you the Coco one now if we go to 2011 um, I actually did a, a description on why I was interested in doing the Coco signal that was quite long so I'm not going to play it but uh, you can see I did it on the 23rd of the 2nd 2011 Coco UK May there's also some other signals I did uh, I did one the next day on copper high grade for instance and uh, then I did one on the dollar against the Canadian dollar so that explains it in full and what all those lines were that you saw on the chart um, but basically what I was saying was that I was looking for Coco uh, for a possible shorting opportunity so when I did that focus signal back in uh, uh, late February it looked something like that and um, what I was actually saying was that uh, I thought there was going to be a shorting opportunity at this level here and I also said I thought it might go a little bit higher which was actually to this level here which is explained in the training video now first of all anybody can do this with hindsight it's the easiest thing in the world however when you're doing it in real time it's a little bit different first of all people say the trend is your friend and you can see in this particular case that the trend of cocoa is very bullish it's been rising for about four or five months and I'm actually saying that I'm looking to do exactly the opposite I'm actually looking to short the market and in fact my preferred third level was actually this one here but uh, when it got to the level it went through the angle um, which put me off and it also went through 33 and a third so I didn't actually do it there um, and my next level that I was watching was here. Uh, now, if you did, if you actually plug, go back, you'll see those are exactly the same angles and exactly the same lines that I had on at the time. Now, again, you won't know why they're there, of course, because I haven't shown you the rules. But um, the market got to my shorting level, which was the 20 by one, and this level here. And uh, what happened was the market changed its trend and in the training video I explain why I thought we're going to have a large bear market from that moment onwards and in fact that's exactly what Coco did now for anybody who's been watching the training videos uh, one of the things I show you is that falls of 50% are very important to look for change in trend the first video that I mention that rule I did in 2002 I think which is on YouTube so there's proof that I actually said it before and uh, as I said in the training video I discussed that I thought the market would be a long-term bear market and you can see that against the prevailing trend at the time the market has gone into a prolonged bear market and then it reached 50% down from its high now unfortunately on the day it went up like an absolute rocket so it was pretty difficult to trade but um, we did have a signal on here to actually buy cocoa uh, in the future and uh, that's what Coco looks today and the reason that it bottomed out where it did is because it fell 50% down from its major high so that was the first signal that I did back in uh, in February February 2011 now the next potential uh, signal I gave in February of 2011 uh, was on the Australian market uh, index and uh, we click on it it'll start the video now this is probably one for our Australian clients due to now I don't want to uh, give away too much but uh, basically uh, what I was looking for was a short and uh, so the short was in uh, in uh, February and uh, so what we're going to do now is see what happened from the signal that I gave that I thought it was a shorting opportunity. I think the important thing to look at here is that I uh, the market had been going up for a good year, um, so we're in a long-term uh, bull market. But uh, to me, it looked like the uh, the trend could be about to change. Okay, so this has not got all the lines on because it was a bit uh, complicated before. Um, but basically, when I did the video, it was here. And um, what I said was I wanted it to reach uh, this angle here for a possible shorting opportunity. Now, uh, they did happen to be the top of the market, and you can see that the market had quite a severe fall uh, down to here. Um, 
it then came back to the angle that I was waiting for and the market fell. So basically when I did the video the trend was up uh, this is where I thought the market was going to turn and ever since the market's been in a prolonged bear market so hopefully uh, you'd agree pretty impressive. Now the next signal I gave uh, was also an Australian item which was on the Australian bond market um, and if we click on that this is my chart at the time now, see, the <coughs> this is the Australian 10 year government bond future and uh, I'm looking for a possible buying opportunity on this angle, the 1 by 32 monthly now uh, I might have missed it because uh, we didn't quite reach it here and uh, we've had this fast rise up but all we now uh, I won't go through the whole thing because like I said uh, there's some pretty unique stuff uh, going on here but basically what I was saying was that uh, I was looking for a major buy uh, on the uh, Australian bond market now unfortunately it never came back to this angle this 1 by 32 to actually give the signal but at the end of the day the trend of uh, the uh, bond market was down um, and I thought the market was going to go up so uh, what we're going to do now is actually look at that chart um, up to date and see what it did. So this is um, a weekly chart actually of, uh, of what happened since I did the video. Now I did the video um, when the market just started to go up. I, has, I was just waiting for it to reach the angle. It, it missed it by a smidge. Um, but remember when I was looking at it at the time the trend was massively down against bonds. Basically, it was the bottom of the market, and the Jap uh, sorry, and the Australian bond market has gone up uh, very strongly ever since. So again, pretty impressive, I feel. Now the uh, next signal I did uh, on the same day was uh, Bunzel, which is uh, a British equity, I think. Uh, and what I was looking for to do on this one was uh, to short it. Now we never actually uh, short. I probably, uh, as, as I said in the video, uh, I actually missed it because it had already moved down too quickly before I did the video. But uh, this is what I said at the beginning. Again, I won't do the whole thing because the video is going to be too long otherwise. Now this is Bunzel. I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, I might have missed this because yesterday it collapsed. Um, but uh, we have a very obvious triple top and it's actually 66.66 percent .66 from uh, so again I'm not going to do the whole thing but um, basically I thought the market was going to go down the problem is I left it too late to actually do and uh, I'm hoping it might have come up to give me a, a better time to actually get into the market uh, that didn't happen so uh, I didn't actually do anything however uh, this is a chart up to date so when I did the video um, it was here and uh, the market did actually go down further but uh, like I said by the time I actually signalled it, it was too far and in the video I went and said that if it went up to the same level again it would probably break through in this particular case I had quite a big fall but uh, Gan said uh, if you ever go up to the same level for a fourth time you tend to break through and uh, so then it became more bullish at this stage here but at the time I thought the market was going to go down that's what the market did Now the next signal that I gave um, on the same day in fact was copper high grade and uh, at the time copper high grade was, was incredibly bullish. Now I'm looking to uh, short copper high grade um, at 275 percent so I won't give you all the reasons but uh, what I said was I was expecting the market to top out at 275 percent. Now look at the trend, well let's look at the, uh, the chart up to date Now I did the video when it looked like this and uh, copper was in a, a major major bull trend. Everyone was extremely bullish of it uh, and it was going up like a rocket. Um, now I said I thought it was probably going to top out around about 275% um, and as I said uh, the market did actually go up higher. Unfortunately it didn't quite get to the level where I thought the market was going to turn so I didn't actually do it but it's important to know when not to make trades. I wasn't buying copper. Most people at the time were very bullish of copper and expected it to continue. I thought we were probably going to go down. So um, it didn't quite get to it as you can see, but what's it done since? Copper has gone into a pretty dramatic bear market and we're just starting to have a rally as recently. But again, 
but it didn't trade it because it didn't quite get to my level. However, I was right, I thought the copper was going to fall. Again, I think pretty impressive. Now the next one I did on the same day was the dollar against the Canadian dollar, so the currency. And on this one I said we are coming up to a level where I thought we might get um, a buying opportunity, but uh, there was a, a level in the future which was far better, so we'll start playing it. Now this is a weekly chart of the dollar v the Canadian dollar. Um, now on most things it seems to me that the dollar might weaken against quite a few things, so uh, I'm not 100% sure about this and uh, after looking at the other day uh, I think it might get down to here but I'm going to do a training video on it to explain why but I'm still going to watch this level anyway so from uh, the major so this is the dollar against Canadian dollar more up to date and uh, what I said in the uh, in the focus signal back in uh, back in February of 2011 was that uh, I thought there might be a possible buying opportunity here um, but actually I thought it was probably not going to work and it was probably going to be more like going to fall to 27.2727% uh, um, so actually let's see what happened well when it got to my level of uh, where I was looking for a change in trend it actually just went straight through so uh, it didn't signal which I was happy about because as, as I said in the video um, I thought it was going to go lower or the dollar was going to uh, con to continue to weaken but I said it would probably reach 27.27 low, low. Now this is when it got to the level that I said that it was probably which looked like the better level to me as a buying opportunity and that's where the market went up. Now remember these are weeks so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's about nine weeks. That's quite a long time. So once you're in the trade, you then follow Gann's stop loss uh, techniques until you uh, actually get stop lost out, which I showed you before uh, in the training video section that we discussed. Um, and up to date, it looks like this. And you can see that it did go back down again, but uh, the major change in trend in favour of the dollar happened against the Canadian dollar, which at the time just didn't look feasible at all back in uh, February of uh, 2011. Now on the same day um, I gave um, a possible shorting opportunity on the FTSE 100 index um, and this is what I said at the beginning of the video. Now I'm uh, looking for reasons to short the FTSE at the moment and uh, I did a training, f uh, sorry, did a video, yeah, training video uh, on the 19th of the 1st uh, 2010 about critical levels. Now uh, a lot of them just went straight through. Uh, the S&P went through my level and it's now actually just reached my next level. Uh, Japan did top out but it didn't last long enough to make any money and this one basically has done exactly what I said it was going to do. Uh, so what I said was I thought that the FTSE was a short and uh, once again you can see at the time the market was very bullish. The market's going up, so what you'll find is that all the news will be good, not because the news is good, just because the market's going up, so they'll tell you good news to justify why the market's going up. But personally, I thought this was a major, major turning point in the FTSE. Um, and so let's see what actually happens after me saying that. And you can see that the market had a massive fall. Uh, I actually ended up making the trade um, I think I got in about there so um, it took me quite a few weeks for actually to get in but uh, you can see that we had the big fall down um, so it turned out quite good and uh, then the market had the rally and we have other signals later on which you'll see but basically that's been the top of the market and that's what the market looks like today so basically against the, against the main trend of the market I found the top of the market. Now the uh, the other signal I did on the 24th of February was Informa and uh, this was the start of the video. Now this is Informa and I've been waiting for well probably over a year for it to get to uh, 465 um, and it hits it exactly and uh, it's collapsed quite quickly so um, what we really need really is some kind of rally to short off so we're not too we really need to put a stop loss above 465 so if we get some kind of rally and maybe a lower trend indicator line top then maybe okay so um, I did the video when Informer looked like this and again you can see that Informer was 
a very strong stock everything looked fantastic you can guarantee that the fundamentals would look fantastic um, but I said that I thought the market was going to top out at 465 from what I said I said that I've been waiting for over a year for the market to actually get there and um, you'll see that basically this is what happened to Informer after the market collapsed it had a rally then it's collapsed in fact it was the top of Informer so basically uh, pretty impressive I think now also on the 24th um, I did uh, the Linux short ETF which is a way of making money from the uh, the CAC 40 falling so this is the beginning of the video and the important thing to note on this one um, because I've shown you on uh, on YouTube the importance of it that it had actually fallen 50% from its major high in 2009 Now this is the short CAC 40 ETF which means that uh, when the CAC falls this rises and uh, I thought the CAC, had, the CAC has actually just gone through 66.66% from its major low uh, and I thought it might have broken through but uh, the fall over the last couple of days means it might not have done. Uh, we're actually at from the major high on this 50, it's fallen 50%. So this is the uh, this is a daily chart so at the time that's what the market looked like to me you can see that the market is going down now if I rescale it um, you can see that it was falling like a stone but it had fallen 50% from its major high in 2009 and I had lots of other reasons as well and I thought this could be a major turning point in the uh, uh, in the CAC of course now the CAC actually turned out to be the top of the market and uh, as you'll see this is what happens afterwards the market goes up it actually comes all the way back down again but you can see that it keeps hitting the 50% level and can't break and then we had uh, the recent big rise up in September and October so predicted the bottom of the market now on the day after the 24th on the 25th because I've probably run out of time doing them on that day I did one on the Treasury note 10 year um, and basically I said that uh, it was possibly a buy signal so um, let's have a look at what I said ok this is treasury note 10 year and uh, I'm still kicking myself I should have done this here speculatively um, the angles on this from the uh, last major low were just absolutely incredible it's just a shame that 8.3 wasn't just a slightly higher um, from the major high now I go on to go and say that uh, it might give us a second chance, um, which actually, with hindsight, is exactly what happens. This is what the chart looked like to me at the time. Uh, it hit a major angle where I thought the market was going to turn. Uh, the market actually came back down again, came back down to the angle, got closer to the level that I said I was watching, went back up again, came back down again, and it formed a triple bottom, uh, which is one of GAN's uh, st strong rules, and uh, I found the bottom of the Treasury note market. And as you can see, the market as of today looks like that again I think pretty impressive now the last one that I did uh, in February and where I'm going to stop this one uh, this video before I uh, do some more for the future um, was on the S&P future which I thought was a shorting opportunity now um, I've done a video um, so you think you're doing GAN angles um, if you watch that um, this is to prove that I didn't actually do what I showed you with hindsight and what I said was I was looking to short um, the S&P on the 6x1 so um, let's play the beginning of it now it's the S&P futures US and uh, in the previous training videos I was uh, I was looking for resistance level on the minus 7x1 monthly and uh, this 50% level and I, but I did point out that they weren't both at the same level and in fact when it got to 50% it did work it was that day that the market fell 160 odd points the problem with it was that and the reason I didn't do it was because there was fundamental news it was the day of uh, the riots in Egypt starting so uh, I never trade the news and then we had the big rise up here um, we've actually now risen now um, it then hits the next major angle which is the 6x1 and um, I actually 
traded this about a week or two later to get into the market but uh, that was where I thought the market was going to top out so actually, let's have, now look and see what actually happened so this is what the chart looked like, it hadn't quite fallen this much uh, when I did the video um, but uh, this is where it hit my major angle and uh, what did the market do? the market went up um, and then we had the big fall um, and that was a signal where I thought the market was going to turn uh, since then it went back up again and I told people the, not to short it here because it was a trend line anybody with a ruler would see it as a potential short so I said it'll either just not work at all or it'll work just long enough to get people in before it goes up sharply and that's exactly what happened the market went down just long enough to get people in before it went up sharply notice how it went up in one day and got rid of what it had done in two weeks on the way down so since then and I've had other signals, uh, one of them was later on you'll see probably is a, a shorting opportunity here but uh, since then it's been pretty much top of the market as uh, the market looks like that today now I hope you enjoyed that um, I think that was pretty impressive in fact uh, because it was al almost a year ago I'd forgotten some of the things I'd done but uh, uh, I'm pretty pleased with that um, my name's Gary Stafford. Um, our website is www.gan.co.uk. If you want to email me, it's gary at gan.co.uk. Um, our object is uh, to teach you how to do this yourself. But if you don't want to do it yourself, the signals are there to take advantage of, take advantage of anyway. Don't forget that we hold um, free basic introductions to GANS techniques via webinars and also seminars in London and uh, Manchester so uh, you're welcome again we're not we don't charge anything for it uh, we're just trying to get you interested and uh, hopefully from that point on uh, you will see that uh, maybe we're a little bit different to the majority of people out there so thank you for listening